weekend. We had his spirit here over the weekend. So we thank the Lord for that. And, um, boy, of course, uh, we always want to go to prayer and ask the Lord to help us anytime we come together to study the Word of God or approach this uh, place. We want to approach, approach it with confidence tonight and with faith. So let's go to prayer tonight and ask the Lord to help us. we have any special needs here? Anybody know of any special needs here tonight? All right. I'm sure we want to keep Sister Lorraine. It's good to see her tonight, the family. Sister Hofer is in the hospital with her heart. They're going to keep her overnight and do some tests. I remember Sister Hofer. Sister Hofer, let's keep her keep her up in prayer. I'm, I'm assuming that's Manatee Memorial, Brother David? Yeah. Manatee Memorial. Uh, Sister Laura Kernison's daughter. Who is that? Laura Kernison, her daughter. She was in the hospital in St. Petersburg. She was in the hospital for the weekend. And the rest of it just feel a little better. She has an infection, a viral infection in the stomach. Let's pray for my son in law, Lulani. He needs a lot of prayer. I think the Lord is calling him home. And my daughter. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Upset. And what's his name? Jim, isn't it? Jim, yeah. Jim Webster. Webber. Webber. Yeah. Well, let's hold up Jim Webber in prayer. Don't forget him. Uh, I've talked to him before. I know that uh, Brother Marlowe has ministered to him, tried to be a strength to him, and uh, looks like the Lord's calling him home. Also, Brother Marlowe and I went up to the hospital. I was just around here long enough to go with him on Friday to see Lucy Walker. And did you see her today, Brother? She's back in the hospital. She's back in the hospital. And I don't know if she came home, but she was there Friday, and she couldn't even get out of bed to, to even talk to us. She's in uh, really, cancer is really taking its toll with her. But God is still God, and Amen. we told her that He, God is able to make a way for her. She was so weak, and they gave her so much <laughs> medication that we couldn't even converse with her. Uh, as far as trying to converse with her, it was almost impossible. So we just said, lay down, just go ahead and lie down there and uh, go to sleep and we'll see you uh, another day. But let's keep her in your prayer, Sister Lucy Walker, Sister Elizabeth. Uh, my brother in Louisville, Kentucky has got cancer and they got him in the Veterans Hospital in Louisville, Kentucky. My goodness. I, I met him one time. What's his name? No, I don't know what you did or not. May Brownie? not be... The, May Jeff. not be. I didn't meet him in St. Pete. Did we not see him in St. Pete years ago? May it's been had to be years ago. Well, I, I was know. a kid when we used to go over there and practice preaching at Brother Gordon Letcher. It's my know. brother now. You're yeah. talking about. Okay, but it could could be, and he could have been down here. Maybe not. Anyway, anyway, if not, we'll still hold him up in prayer. Ask the Lord to make a way. My wife. Yes. Let's don't forget, let's don't forget her. Don't forget Sister Farias. Don't forget the labor that Brother Farias has in trying to take care of her. That's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to go through, taking care of somebody that's ill. So let's pray. That's I've talked with Sister Joyce. She's not here, but... She wanted everybody to remember in prayer. She said she thought she might be here. I'm talking about Sister um, mm -hmm. Rivera. Rivera, Sister Joyce Rivera. Let's remember her in prayer. She may come in, but she said that she needs special prayer tonight. And I said, well, we'll remember you. Is that it? Anybody have any other outspoken request? How many have unspoken requests in families? I do. I'd like to put my family prayer lesson. Remember uh, our family and remember our oldest son. Pray that God will uh, help
helping some situations there, no different than any other family. You can be in church and grow up in church and still have problems. We're not exempt from it. And uh, pray for my grandson. He's four years old in our home. And I don't know if my wife and I at 57, if she's not far behind me, has the strength to do this. But so far the Lord's helped us. And I bring it before all of you to pray for us, you know. Getting aware that she just, he wrestles so much in the meetings that she may not be able to attend as frequently as she would like because it's just a tremendous job. And uh, I told her last night, I watched her try to worship. She couldn't try to worship and almost impossible. But um, we know that nothing is, uh, is impossible with God. And the Lord's able to just touch him and he just sit there like a statue through the whole meeting. I don't know, but uh, we know God's able to help him. The Lord helped us. I grew up in church, and I'm sure a lot of you did, and we didn't. It wasn't easy, but we made it. Somebody loved us. Somebody cared about us. So I just, I've just put my name. While I'm here tonight, just put my family on your list. Pray for my family. Pray for the will of God to be done. A lot of those areas. How many have family members that you just can't talk about, but God knows all about it. You know, He knows exactly what to do. All right, that's it. That's what we we have. Anybody else? And pray for Sister Elizabeth. She still needs a touch. Sister Joyce, I called your need your name out in prayer. She can't hear me, but anyway. All right, let's pray. Lord, we come before you yes, right now believe that you're with us tonight. Lord, we know that as we gather our minds together and we gather our hearts together and we come around your word, Lord, that you're in the midst. We know that you meet us in these studies, Lord, and that the will of God is always done. Your will is always wrought in our lives, Lord. We pray for our pastor tonight. Pray for his wife, Lord, that you'll make a way for them, strengthen them, Dear God, we pray for the church and the many, many needs in this church, Lord. Lord, we pray for those that are out of the ark of safety, those in the hospital, those in the nursing homes tonight, Lord. Lord, the names that we mentioned tonight, too many to go back through, but oh God, you're conscious of every need. You're conscious of every one tonight. And your word is infallible and your word is immutable tonight place our confidence in you knowing that you will answer and that you will send help in the time of need we thank you for that and we praise you lord for your love and for your mercy and for your grace lord tonight we ask you lord to to bring us grace to bring us power that we need in these last days and the troubles and times that we live and everybody just say amen, amen. Now let's just thank the Lord for his presence over the weekend. And then we'll get started with some questions and some things here tonight. Praise the Lord for his help over the weekend. We had a great, great meeting. And um, Brother Steve Pope's son come to the Lord last night. And um, then another brother, um, Sister Lambert's son. Hadn't seen him in a long time. Played in the, played in the band. Big boy. Nick. Uh, Nick. Uh, come back to God last night. Wonderful meeting. Young people. Touch to the Lord. I let you know you're doing something right. Let you know what our pastor's preaching is right. Before I jump into the book of Romans, there, I've got a couple of passages that I've been passing on. I've been just passing them on because... Um, I just feel like the Lord gave them to me just a few days ago, and I'm going to sit down here a minute and just sort of give you uh, a little scripture here, and then we'll go to the book of Romans. Is it right? Well, it, it, since you're in the book of Romans, uh, it's been a few days on my mind for several days, Romans 8, 28. I've been kind of disturbed about it. Well, let's, let's hold that thought and let me jump right into it. Uh, 
let me give you these two passages the Lord laid on my heart in Proverbs. I know it's a deviation, but not much. Uh, I just want to give you, go to Proverbs 2 and verse 10. I shared this with the brethren um, uh, earlier. I'll put this up here like this, better for me. I think I can be picked up enough that... Uh, 2 and 10, Proverbs 2 and 10. Now we know that this book is a, a, a corrective book and that Solomon, um, maybe not in the beginning of his life, but at least toward the end of his life, wisdom was coming to him. And there was a lot of experiences that uh, Solomon had. And as he got older, thing is that his mother loved him dearly and the Jewish history on that is that even the 31st chapter of the book of Proverbs where who can find a virtuous woman was really uh, written to and was Bathsheba pleading with her son trying to get her son uh, to marry the right one and to look at the qualifications of who he was to marry. And whether that's true or not, I don't know. He can't really nail it down that it absolutely was Bathsheba's words but, and that she had written that to Solomon. But it makes for a good story anyway. It makes, makes, uh, and it makes a lot of sense because he, he definitely was looking for uh, the right type of wife by the time he got there. But in these instructions came, and I've used these. This is not the first time, that, but it is the second time that I, I've used these scriptures, and I feel like the church needs them. And uh, in the elders' meeting, I think Saturday, I cautioned some of the brethren and asked them to consider these scriptures. And I think any time that you, you gather people together, it's, it's awful easy to be judgmental to uh, line yourself up with something that you feel might be uh, stands out to you but the Bible is a book of mercy it is a book of love more scriptures on love in the Bible and there's more scriptures on mercy in the Bible than any other and far more than judgment far more than somebody's uh, corrective work but in the second chapter of Proverbs, and I said verse 10, beautiful language said, when wisdom enters into your heart and knowledge is pleasant unto your soul. And I think that's why we're here tonight. I, I think that's why everybody's here tonight. I, I think it is. I know it is. Because if we ever needed wisdom, we need it now. If the world ever needed wisdom, it needs it now. Because we're living in, in the most mixed up age that has ever been. The problems with, with the world, the problem with the age. And all you got to do is read the paper, open the Bible up, open the newspaper up, know a little bit about Bible prophecy and how in the world could you remain drifting away from God knowing what we know today and seeing what we see today from the problem uh, with the tsunami right on through till you get to where the little country over there in the Middle East and the scripture says let the weak say that I am strong and when you have a, a little weak nation and a dictator that's pushing civilians around uh, and imposing his own will and you look at the countries like Brother Marlowe said over the weekend and you look at the this jockeying back and forth for uh, position in the Middle East, then you'd have to say, Lord, uh, you know, Jesus said, lift up your heads. He said, when you see all of these things coming, he said, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. And it does. I may be sitting, maybe I'm just uh, too much here. Uh, but anyway, he said, put it on. Good day. Good day. <laughs> you 
lift up your, your hands, he said, and for your redemption draweth nigh. And he said, uh, men's hearts, the book of Luke said, men's hearts would fail them with fear. They can't hear you. For looking upon the things that are coming. And uh, it, you, you just have to know that without wisdom, without understanding, our nation and any other nation will be lost. The Bible said, for the nation that forgets God shall be turned into hell. And I often use that scripture. I, people, I don't know how you see that. And this is a Bible class. And we can discuss that. And I love theology. I love the things of God I have since I was a child here. Uh, and I haven't played with this Bible. I love this Bible. My pastor put a love for it in my heart over 40 years ago. It's going to be 44 years that I've walked with him. And I've missed a few classes, but for the most part I haven't. Now, I've been here and I've listened to what was put out here. And I can tell you that uh, it's going to take some serious Bible students to keep up with what's going on. And like I said, the one verse uh, that that we have to get is to apply our heart right here. And, and, and let wisdom enter your heart. Mm -hmm. And knowledge is pleasant unto your soul. And discretion shall preserve you, and understanding shall keep you. Now, go to chapter 3, just one chapter over. Go to chapter 3 with me. And uh, let's look at the first three verses. And then Brother Marlowe told me before he went to dinner with uh, uh, Brother Whitworth, and I was glad to see Brother John Whitworth and his wife, and uh, they're working with Brother Marlowe now somewhere eating and I'm sure talking about the Lord and doing the Lord's business and uh, he asked me to pray with you all tonight and share some scriptures with you and I said okay but let's pray for Brother Whitworth and, and his wife I'm glad it was good it was awful good to see him today verse 1 said my son forget not my law but let your heart notice how many times your word the word heart is used here used it in the previous chapter now I'm using it again let your heart keep my commandments for the length of days and long life and peace shall they add to you verse 3 is the verse I really want to get to the verse I wanted to share here tonight before we go to Romans it said let not it said let not mercy and truth forsake you but bind them about your neck and write them upon the table of your heart if there ever was a scripture the church needed now you're talking about a timely verse you're talking about a timely word uh, the bible said of jesus said that he knew how to speak a word in season and brother steve i don't mean to work you so hard back there dropping his scriptures in, but I believe that's probably the 50th chapter of Isaiah said that he knew how to speak a word in season to them that are weary. Uh, and Jesus did. He knew just where to place those words. The Bible said words fitly spoken are like uh, um, apples. Uh, apples of gold. Thank you. <laughs> and pictures of silver. And uh, so placing these words and having the word of God, if there ever was a timely word we needed, we need this. Uh, if, I could, if I could advise and go back and tell people, I'm not the youngest person here tonight, but I don't think I'm the oldest one here, but I'm somewhere sandwiched in the middle. And I can tell you this, if it had not been, and I'm sure everyone here tonight can can say with me, if it had not been for mercy, we would not be here tonight, any of us. If it had not been for mercy, and if there wasn't a mercy seat that superseded the judgment seat, I'm sure that none of us would be here tonight. But it's God's mercy. It's God's grace. Hallelujah. The unmerited favor of the Lord 
that has allowed us to be here tonight. And if I have any words, I was telling the brother, you can't sum a person's life up in five years. You can't sum a person's life up in 10 years or 20 years. But when you look back on it and you go back, Sister Lorraine, how old are you? 80? 80, 89. 89. Be 89, and I've known you a long time. But I'll tell you this: that, that you are closer to God, the last, and you know from what I've been able to just observe and see, than than you've ever been. The last year or two, the Lord has done a wonderful work in your life, and there's a depth there that hasn't been. And so, when you sum a person's life up, you don't sum it up by uh, the early years or even the middle years but get somewhere down the end when they get down to the end look at what God has done and the most successful people are those that find mercy and truth around their neck write them upon the table of the heart now we started last week I did not say we because I was here I was privileged to be here let's go back to the book of Romans and um, I want to lay a little groundwork for some areas that Brother Morrow started in. There's some areas that he got to. He said he wanted to go through uh, the book of Romans, urged me tonight to stay within that and, of course, work from that. And all of you know that when you work from the Bible, you work especially in these Bible studies. I try to tell people, if you don't have it in your notes, write this down, that uh, there, there are key books in the Bible there are key chapters in the Bible, and there are key verses in the Bible, and there's key words in the Bible. And if you're looking for truth and you search for truth, you have to find it in those key parts of the Word of God. And you have to locate it through keys. I remember one time, I want to share this experience because I'll never forget it. And it, it was mine. It happened to me. It, didn't happen to you, but it happened to me. I was sent to Arcadia to uh, work over there. I was in my 20s, and um, at that time, since you think was here tonight, I bought a Volkswagen from she and Brother Gerald, and, and uh, was in my 20s. It's a good little car, and uh, I drove over to do a Bible study about, oh, maybe 25 years old. When I got to that Bible study that night, went in that little pink building that we had over there, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and, and I waited, and I waited, and nobody came. It wasn't anybody came. And on the way back, uh, I began to cry. I said, Lord, You show me how to teach your word and people would want to come and hear. Would you talk to my heart? Would you help me? Would you teach me your word? This is what I was praying on the way back. Something happened that night that I'll never forget as long as I live. There was a presence that came in that car on the way back that I have I've only felt that type of presence maybe once two other times in my entire life. I won't say it was an audible uh, word, but there was a word so resoundingly microphoned and amplified in my mind and in my spirit that it was so loud I couldn't help but hear what the Lord was saying. And that word was, the Lord said, well, my word is understood by combinations. When you get to combinations, you can unlock my word. It was almost like I was talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, combinations, what do you mean? And he began to show me that, that, the, that it is understood by keys. That this, this, this whole Bible is, uh, is a book of keys. And when you get the keys, you're able to unlock the mysteries. But not without the keys. And the 
final word he gave me that he put in my spirit was that night. He said, I will begin this night and I will give you keys and you use them. And God has helped me. He has given me from that time to this, I can remember him dropping different keys, Brother Dick, into my life and showing me uh, and uh, let me understand that these were the keys. Now, you, you know that's exactly what he told Peter. However, it was used a little bit differently. He said, 